Today, I'm in Shenzhen, China, standing outside of Altitude's seven-story production facility. I'm gonna show you how an LED screen is made from start to finish. Let's head on inside and unpack this high-tech and unbelievably impressive process. So Shenzhen is an epicenter for technology manufacturing, and most of the world's electronics are made right here in the city as well as the surrounding cities that touch it. Now, while this factory is super high-tech, there's a range of factories. What I'm gonna do now is prepare myself to enter this high-tech facility because we do care about quality and we wanna make sure we don't bring any contaminants into the production area. All right, we're almost ready. Now check this thing out. So to protect my feet and prevent items from going in, I'm gonna put my foot here and it's gonna heat shrink it around my shoe. There we go, check that out. It gives me the beep. We're ready to enter production. So the last step of this process is to get dusted. I'm gonna go into this little dust chamber right here. Let me unlock it. And I'm gonna get dusted and blown with air so that I can enter the facility. Let's take a look. Okay, now we are in the SMT production line. This is where the magic happens and the first step to all things LED screens. So it all starts with the lamp. And the lamp is this little tiny diode that I'm holding with this tweezer. To give you a reference for how small this really is, I'm gonna put it next to a grain of rice. Now, that little diode is what makes up the majority of the screen. That's what your eye is seeing. That's what's producing the image. Now, on a 10 foot by 20 foot screen, there are over 5,312,160 diodes. That's a lot of little parts to nail. And that's why it's so important that so much emphasis is put into that diode and manufacturing process, because that's essentially over 5 million points of failure that could potentially happen. So it is really important to consider the quality when it comes to your screen because it's a big investment and every little diode that has a joint that disconnects, you will have a dead pixel. If you thought that was crazy, now let's take it to another level. I have in my hand right here a chip that is about half the size as that one that I originally showed you. I'm gonna drop it on the paper here and move it next to that chip. The big one is a 2020 chip and this one that I just dropped that I'm trying to flip over is so small I can't even grab it is a 1010. Now in each one of these lamps, there's a red, green, and blue component in there, making up that huge image. We put extreme care and attention into this, and I'm gonna show you exactly how these diodes are attached right to the PCB. You've seen a circuit board before, you know what it looks like, and you may have heard the term PCB, or printed circuit board. What that is, is literally a board being printed using a screen like this. So this screen, has been etched out and solder paste is then squeegee through this screen just like you would print a t-shirt and it's applied directly to the board. So this unit right here is where the blank boards would get set into and then it gets fed into the squeegee machine. So right here is where this frame is set and it's doing the job of applying the paste right to the blanks. Now that the board has the paste applied to it, it's in the inspection chamber. This inspection machine has a camera that is close up on each point that that paste was applied. If the board is good, the screen is green. If the board fails, it'll turn red and the tech will simply take the board out of the machine and it will go into a failed pile. You can see the precision of what it's looking for so that when it enters the next machine, the little diodes will be able to attach securely to that board. So now we're standing in front of the surface mount machine. The entire process here is called SMT, or surface mount technology. That means that the components are surface mounted directly to the boards with that paste. This machine is the one placing those components. So this spool here has all the LEDs on a strip. This spool is loaded right into the carrier and each strip goes through the cassette into the machine that is then picking the parts from this little strip. Each little LED diode is strategically placed onto the board in a configuration that is preloaded into the machine. 
it's amazingly fast, it's going at lightning speed, and there's one, two, three, four heads on this side and another four on that side. There's extreme precision with this. Each board has a registration mark, so the little cameras and sensors know exactly where to place the diode. When it came down to just the millions and millions and millions of diodes that are placed, this is where that quality comes in. Now that the boards have the components placed onto them, it's gonna go through a inspection point before it enters the reflow furnace. So this inspection is another quality control to ensure that before the reflow happens, which locks the components to it, that everything is ready for that moment. So the reflow furnace, which is this heat tunnel essentially, takes the boards, heats them up to 482 degrees Fahrenheit over this entire tunnel and during this process, it's locking all the components together by heating up that paste that was applied at the very beginning. So the board travels through this tunnel, and at the end, we have a completed module that's ready for its inspection. So the entire process from start to finish is 15 minutes. The heat, which is the final stage, is seven minutes. So the board is just about to come off the line. It's just been baking in there. It's gonna be really warm. So I'm gonna watch it, and as it comes off, I'm gonna bring it up here and I'm gonna set it down. And that plate is like really hot. So it's gonna cool for 10 seconds. We'll go ahead and take this out of its frame. And again, this front side would be completely inspected visually to ensure there's no visual defects. The back side with all the chips will be visually inspected. And then the final stage of this test is just putting it into the board right here and we'll go ahead and hit the test button and we'll do a visual inspection of blue, white, then to green and red. So now that this has been visually inspected, we go ahead and set it into a stack here and it's ready to now move to the next floor. Now that the module has completed the SMT production, it's brought down and coated. The coating that's applied protects the board from moisture, corrosion, and mold. It also adds a fire-resistant coating. Now, the module is set aside for a moment and we're gonna focus in on the cabinet. This is the other key component of the screen. Within the cabinet, there are multiple key components. We'll call them critical components. So first we have the frame. That's the housing that everything is gonna be bolted to as well as the module is gonna be applied. So the modules are applied utilizing the magnets in here. Outside of the frame, we have the power supply. That is what's providing power to the modules. That power supply connects directly to the hub boards. The hub boards is what takes the information that's coming from the processor to the loaded receiving card that is mounted directly to the hub board and then sends power and signal to every module that is placed onto the cabinet. So once the modules are married to the cabinet, we now have a complete frame ready to be attached to a wall or hung. Now it's time to take everything down to aging. In aging, the screen is tested for 72 hours. Before that test begins, calibration happens. Calibration is completed by an instrument that is aimed towards the screen that analyzes all information for brightness and color temperature and evenness, and then if any little adjustments are needed, it happens at that time. The screen after calibration is then aged for 72 hours, ensuring every piece of component is stable and there are no issues. Once that 72 hour test is completed, every module is bagged and placed in foam and boxed, and then also the cabinet is disassembled and bagged and sealed. All these units are then placed into a box protected for its journey to the Altitude Stateside Warehouse, where items are ready to be delivered to you. If you're pursuing the path of an LED screen, be sure to talk to an Altitude LED expert. We're here to answer any question you may have about LED screen technology. 
We hope this behind the curtain review of the entire process from A to Z has opened your eyes and ideas of what you can do with an altitude LED screen. We look forward to serving you, and if you have any other questions, please reach out. Like and subscribe now.